first mention of a hostelry on the bustling London Road was in 1442, when a letter refers to a hospitium called The Heart. That inn has survived civil war, the coming of the railways and economic turmoil, standing here for more than five and a half centuries. What we're looking at here is the Great Arch, where the coaches would come right through the building to the stables at the back in order to change the horses. So it really was an important place on that road to London, wasn't it? It was. There were at least 78 coach movements every week, and that was the scheduled stops, let alone the private coaches wanting rested horses as well. So the White Hart had 280 horses available for the trade, and it was big business. The dining room is one of the oldest parts of the inn, but it wasn't always used for eating. In the early 19th century, this was the magistrate's court dealing with minor offences. And long after that practice officially ended, the White Hart was still holding mock trials for offences like missing a penalty in the local village football match. And of course, all fines had to be paid in beer. Out of all the historical detail you see in and around the pub, there's one you could miss, and it's this, this Tudor rose motif on the fireplace. And it is absolutely key to understanding the history of the pub, isn't it, Richard? That's right, because this emblem was used by Henry VII to unify the country after the Wars of the Roses, and it wasn't used before that. We still use it today, and it's on the England rugby shirts. So it's a very important emblem of the unity of England. And it's not just the emblem itself, it's what it's carved into as well, isn't it? That's right, because we're in chalk and flint country here. There is no stone within 40 miles. Now, in those days, transporting stone across country in carts was extremely expensive. So the owners were very well to do. And a century later, it seems money was still no object at the White Hart. In the tumult of civil war, regulars paid for their beer with coins minted by the inn itself. Despite its longevity over the centuries, luck ran out for the White Hart in 2011 and it closed down. It's rather hard to believe it now, but it stood deserted and derelict for four years. One by one, we watched various landlords come in here and they had no money to invest in it and the owners weren't going to invest in it so it had to come from somebody like us who you know was going to fall in love with the building and try and bring it back to what it should be but actually this one we've had a tremendous response i'm delighted so the white heart has reinvented itself for the 21st century standing on the crossroads of overton and of history as it always has done